Hello and welcome everybody to Advantage One RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd. This is where we sell RVs on consignment on behalf of their owners. This thing, uh, 7,275 pound, 25 RLS StarCraft couples camper back here. It is small, it is light as far as fifth wheels go. It is compact, it's extremely travel accessible. Well kept, it's got a hitch on the back in case you're wanting to do some doubles towing, like put a boat back there with a wiring harness. This is sharp. There's a lot of really good stuff going on here. And the storage in this thing is crazy. And what's interesting, this is the 25 RLS StarCraft. It is quite literally just the fifth wheel version of their 24 R uh, RLS StarCraft launch travel trailer. It's basically the same layout, just adapted to a fifth wheel. And that's a great thing because this is an amazing layout. It, it gives you the space, uh, the seating, the sense of a super slide without the extra length, weight, and cost of a super slide. Now, one of the things I also like here is the previous owners swapped out the original RV sofa and put in a residential, like, theater love seat right there. And one of the things I like about that, it's a little more narrow, which means it's easier to walk between the counter and the sofa right there so that it is easier to reach all of that countertop prep space. Now, if I spin you around like a record, baby, you see that when you sit down here, you're directly across from the entertainment center. So you kick your feet up on this theater seat. You could sit here and, you know, chit chat with maybe whoever's at the table over there having a little bit of a good time, you know, shoot the, shoot the breeze, chew the fat, have a drink as it were. I like this layout. It looks and it feels big, even though it is not over the top, gigantic, over like, like huge or anything like that. And adapted to the fifth wheel here, like the lower deck's pretty much the same as the travel trailer version, but this fifth wheel, they start adding little touches. Like there's a little coat hanger right there and there's just the storage in this thing. It, uh, well, I mean, I, I, I Googled it and um, uh, Siri.Google.exe told me it is absolutely redonkulous. Starting right up there with that theater love seat. Uh, there's three doors. The left-hand door does open. Just uh, <laughs> the other, this door right there is kind of in its way. When I said three doors, did that kind of sound like there's three doors? <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, gorge. Now that goes way back there. Make sure you're putting stuff back there that you can reach or have a stool to get back there. And again, let me get down here real quick. Just some, some killer prep space in this thing. Some great countertop dedicated space over there and some easy reach appliance outlets, which is really, really nice. Down below here, handy little, you know, if it were me, what do you think about this? I would actually remove that shelf below the sink to make room for a little waste basket. Also, anytime I get a chance, I like to look in like the food based appliances so that you can see they're not full of moldy, mildewy, hot pocket crumbs or anything like that. Because uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not above eating a Hot Pocket every now and then. Hot Pocket! But uh, I'm not going to leave my, my stuff behind. But not everyone is as courteous, so I like to give you a good look at what we're seeing here. Now, this this little thing right here, you're like, oh, sweet. So there actually is a pantry, because it kind of hides around the corner. But the thing is, it's over here where you actually have a big pantry. And that, I mean, it's a good, good example of what I like to call the pantry tainment center. By the way, that TV is on a swing out uh, arm. So if you want to make it face a little bit more towards the uh, dining arrangement over here, which can, has storage below it and folds down into a sleeper if need be, by the way. But it's over here. Look at this. That is some, I'm running into stuff. That is awesome. I don't know if you're even really getting, there we go. Let me get you just a little bit better. Like it is all the way deep, all the way behind the TV, pretty much from floor to ceiling. Now there must be something hidden back there since that one doesn't open if I get my fat head out of the way so you can see it anyway. Now moving upstairs here, they actually do a very classic upper deck. We're actually going to start at the front and then work our way around up top here. So TV hookups over here on the wall. Handy little drunken octopus coat hanger guy. And if you're not sure why I call it that, look at that thing and tell me that does not look like an octopus looking for a fight after one too many. I don't know. What would an octopus drink? What? Uh, that's that, that's a real question. I need a specific answer left in the comments. What is an octopus's? Octopies? So, hmm. This went off the rails. I, I, was not, I was not looking for it to do what it just did. But anyway, <laughs> that is a... <laughs> 
Not the original factory backbreaker waiver of death kind of mattress. No, sir. That has been updated, upgraded quite nicely. And by the way, have you noticed that both of the side stands over here have their own little individual drawers? But that's like, that's not even the appetizer in terms of all of the upper deck storage. You have this huge hallway mega closet over here, which is just a classic thing that sort of has phased out of the RV industry, and I don't know why. I will come back in just a second and get that open. Notice that little catch right there, so that if you do want to privatize the upper deck, well, that's really all it takes. You can just close it out. It looks like maybe there was a toilet paper holder right there. I, I missed that my first time through. Porcelain foot flush stool right here. The bathroom is simple, but effective. It does what it needs to do. It doesn't do anything more. It doesn't do anything less. And actually, let me stand over here in that shower just to see what kind of space do we have. Because I have been, okay, so if I take my hat off, can I? Okay, so I don't want to say my hair because, I mean, look at me. We can't, we can't really call that hair, can we? The fuzz on the top of my head, you might hear, is just barely touching this. So this is about a 6'3 clearance right here. But... The shower head mount is behind me, so most of the time I'd be standing here. Ooh, that's a bright glare off my forehead. So hopefully your eyes have readjusted here so you can see the, like, serious dresser space right there. Handy little socks and undies drawer right there for your personal unmentionables, perhaps. And then this is where the majority of your hanging storage is. But what's cool is it's just in the hallway. It's not in a slide-out. So you don't have to, like, open the slide to get to it because the bed would potentially block the doors of a bed slide. Like, I can picture that in my head. Is that clear, what I'm saying? Because sometimes I'm afraid that people can't understand what goes through my weird nugget because I have weird thought processes. Moving on. And you didn't think I'd say something like, this is great for travel access without showing it in road mode now, would you? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't, I don't know. So really, the television's kind of the only thing that you lose access to in transit. Although, I mean, if you really had to, you could actually kind of watch TV through the windows uh, <laughs> of the slide out if you wanted to sit in the chair over there. I don't know why that would be a serious concern for anybody, but theoretically you could. But other than that, I mean, this is a comfortable walkthrough. Two people could turn sideways and scoot past one another. You need to get in here, get yourself a bite to eat. I mean, this is, I'm going to call it totally turtle friendly, dude. Now, this has a, uh, a very significant exterior upgrade, actually several of them. As far as I can tell, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Somebody might have custom ordered this with like every option they could throw at it at the time because it has things like a full fiberglass skin upgrade. It has the enclosed heated belly package. Uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff on here that the AR1 fifth wheels didn't traditionally have. And that's not a tall baggage door, but that's a big compartment below the bedroom and bathroom right there. And something I think a lot of newer RVers don't always recognize is like a tall baggage door. It's really impressive. You see a big space, you're like, yeah, I could put big totes in there, brother. Whoa! Like Ric Flair in the, up in this place. But you don't tend to stack cargo high. You tend to stack cargo flat and side by side so that it doesn't fall down and shift in transit as easily. Well, that wide baggage compartment is extremely good for doing that. Now you might notice there's this red, looks like a cow's hoof thing hanging out the front pin box, uh, the kingpin here. This, uh, the folks had used a uh, Anderson tripod hitching system. Uh, basically this little guy right here can just be pulled off of there if that's not what you're looking for. And it can just be, at that point, it's just a traditional fifth wheel uh, kingpin, by the way. But like, look at the skin, the cleanliness here. And it's overcast, it's not even bright today. You can see just the gleam coming off that nose. I haven't found any significant signs of like dirt or something like that on here. Outside utility shower, black tank flush, all that stuff here right above the sewer stinky slinky station. And again, this does have the heated enclosed underbelly option package that was available on these. You might notice up top by the ladder, she is backup camera ready. And even if it wasn't, there's all sorts of like aftermarket upgrade upfit things to add rear cameras onto stuff if it's not already prepped for it. But this back here, along with its shorter length, this I think is a huge thing. Like an Eagle HT Jayco fifth wheel, this is actually in a sense a cousin to a Jayco. You see that it does have a uh, hitch put on the back and there's a four-way wiring harness added right there. So that if you wanted to do something like add a little cargo trailer, a little 
boat uh, and do some doubles towing, do some serious like outdoorsman kind of stuff. This one's ready and with no slides over here on the door side. It's just pure patio space. And it's this extra kind of stuff, like, like closing the slide out, getting up here on the roof. That's the extra stuff we want to do here at Advantage One RV. Shameless self-promotion time up there in the corner. Um, <laughs> love that sign. I love the colors. It looks good. Uh, but doing the extra things so that, like, on a used RV, you can see the condition of the roofing of the seals, which all look good on here. Because, frankly, on a used RV, this is potentially the single most critical area to check out. And it's probably the single most overlooked area for most buyers. Now, I'm currently doing something very stupid. I'm just hanging off the back ladder to get you this shot. But I noticed on my way down, some of the bead sealant along this rear term strip, termination strip, uh, looks like it's not doing what it's supposed to do. I haven't seen any areas where I think that's actually causing a problem. I think that just a quick little bead of some non-sag sealant would take care of you. You'd be back up and running. But again... If I see something, I say something. You know that we're always gonna give you straight facts down here. Oh, and by the way, this little corner compartment over here, uh, this is under the kitchen countertop. This is at a space that you can't really get to from the inside. So you see how the folks utilized it outside here. Well, not the folks, the designers. They made sure that they didn't just waste it. That's what I was gonna, it's storage. That's all I had to say. Hey guys, look, there's storage. I'm an idiot, <laughs> So what do you think of this little guy? I swear, I've said it so much this year. I'm constantly saying, why aren't things like this still being built? This is a brilliant layout for a small, compact, lightweight fifth wheel. The travel accessibility alone wins it for me in, in, in this kind of size. Being able to maneuver this through like uh, state parks, national parks, tight spaces, uh, twisty, turny driveways or whatever. This is legit. This is absolutely RV nerd preferred right here. Give us a call. We'll get you camping, we do financing, we do hitching, we do it all. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and have an A1 day, everyone.